subscribe and click the bell icon for the latest updates from Express Drives. On today's time, when it comes to new car buying, most buyers prefer to have an SUV. Well, as we all know, SUVs come at a cost, but you cannot control the emotions or the aspirations of a buyer. And to address that, a lot of companies came up with compact, then some compact SUVs. But what about the people who buy hatchbacks? Well, this is the answer for them. So Maruti Suzuki went ahead and thought that why not give an SUV feel to the people who buy entry-level hatchbacks. So if you're someone who's buying the Alto KT, you can probably just spend a little more and buy this all-new Maruti Suzuki Espresso. Now the company claims this is the first micro mini SUV in its segment, but how is it to drive and is it really any different from the regular hatchback that is something like a Renault Quaid or an Alto K10? Is it any better or is it just the same old recipe in a new bottle? Well, it's time to find out. So we have the keys with us and we'll take you along with the drive. And because this is such a different vehicle, what we've decided to do is this review is going to be done in one shot. So no brakes, as you will see, we will do the entire review in one go. So come along with us for the ride. And now, well, we're inside the car. So safety first, always buckle up. That's the first thing you need to do whenever you get into a car. Now, we have driven this car yesterday as well. So we drove the manual version. What we have with us today is the AGS, that is the AMT version. So that is the convenience of an automatic that you get here. Now, well, let's start the drive. And just to give you a background, we are in the beautiful city of Jodhpur. To be precise, we are a little away from Jodhpur right now, around Khimsa. And this is the time when we are now starting our drive back to Jodhpur. Now, the first thing, the first interaction point that anyone has with a car is the design because, well, you need to see it first before you experience anything else. And in terms of design, the Espresso does stand out because there's no other vehicle in this segment in the country. In fact, not in any country as far as I know. So, yes. The designers have tried a lot to give it the SUV stance and you can see that in the design. You can see a lot of uh, Vitara Brezza inspiration at front. Also has resemblance to the Mahindra Scorpio. Well, good or bad, that's up to you to decide. But at the end of the day, with all that effort, there is a boxy and a SUV-ish look that the Espresso has. The problem is that it does not have the dimensions. And because of the small dimensions, it is unable to exude a macho or a dynamic look. Now, the other thing that really makes the Espresso different from any other vehicle is the polarity of its design. So unlike a lot of other cars, which some people like, some people dislike, some people say, okay, it grows on you. Well, there's no middle ground for this vehicle. It is simply a love it or hate it affair at the first sight. And we've been talking to people uh, because there is a lot of interest from bystanders and onlookers when they see this vehicle because it's so different and it's been completely just like that. People instantly come and say, I love it. Or they just say, nah, that's not my cup of tea. You do have these small wheels which uh, sort of uh, do not go along well with the side profile. Although the side profile has a large gap between the wheel arches, sort of takes away the dynamic stance, unless you do opt for certain uh, additions. But if you are opting for a normal top variant, there is no way to get an alloy wheel as a factory fitment. The rear again is uh, very simple, just like the side. So the majority of the work you can see at the front, otherwise it's a simple design. So, well, like I told you earlier, it's simple. It's love it or hate it. Now, as we have seen from the feedback that we have got from people, it could go either ways. Maruti believes and is confident that it will go the good way. That is, most people will sort of like it. So, well, that's up to you. 
uh, what do you think of design do share your feedback on design in the comment section with us now uh, coming to the interiors well if you talk about the interiors this is a place that i can truly say is very impressive about the vehicle the particular variant the particular color in fact that we're driving the new orange shade well if you opt for this you do get these very good looking uh, accents the circular instrument console and you've got these orange accents around it so these look very funky and energetic so that will go well with the uh, young buyers you've got a completely digital instrument cluster instead of the side layout you've got it at the center can take some time getting used to but again the readouts are fairly large and they you can easily uh, gather the information from these now the uh, touch screen again it's a very impressive unit it comes with maruti suzuki smart play and it's a color touch screen the touch response is good the user interface is simple the best part is it comes loaded with android auto and apple car play so connectivity is taken care of you also have the option of a usb and a aux in point along with a 12 volt charging socket here so you can keep multiple devices charged on the go so that's a good thing in terms of um, build quality material quality the fit and finish again from a segment perspective from a price point perspective things are quite nice here there's not much you can complain about so everything looks as if it's been done well the texture on the materials is nice so you've got a good touch feel to it and of course something that is a first in its segment is this a multi function steering wheel so it comes with mounted controls so you can control your bluetooth telephony and your audio using the controls here this is something that no other vehicle in this segment offers the other good thing that you get in this vehicle is internal adjustment for your orvms so you can do this manually using the stocks here now this is again something that you get in the espresso and not in something like the renault quid so that again is an advantage in terms of practicality you have got good space you've got cup holders here so you can easily put two cups or two cans something like that and there's some more space here near the under the handbrake lever so good in terms of practicality and space if you talk about the rear seat again good space there no lack of leg room again it's a tall boy design so head room is also good so even uh, if you're a tall uh, person so i am like 5 feet 8 inches and i had no problem so if you're taller than me you'll still not be lacking uh, space in terms of either leg room or head room so that is a very good thing about the espresso that despite its diminutive dimensions the designers have been able to carve out good space inside the cabin which is very important for a lot of buyers who will opt for this car as a family vehicle so that is an area where the espresso checks all the right boxes and if you talk about the boot well again the boot is also nice it's got a little high loading lip because of the design but beyond that the design inside is nice so the volume that is on offer is something that you can actually utilize and is not just there for it to be on a brochure so that again is a very good thing now coming to the driving part of the espresso well it comes with one engine only and that's the 1 liter k series engine and uh, well in terms of power output or in terms of torque it's the same there's no change that has been made for the espresso when you compare it to the alto k10 there is of course calibration changes and the good thing is that apart from the regular 5 speed manual gearbox you can also go in for the ags that is the auto gear shift or in layman's term an amt transmission which i told you that is the one that we are driving right now and in terms of uh, performance well the car is quite light it's not heavy so with the power on tap it just goes there's no problem at all in terms of acceleration it's got good linear build up of acceleration so yesterday we drove it on the highway and a lot of times we had to do quick overtaking because of the highway to around jodhpur being single lane well we didn't face any problems at all we were able to 
do that comfortably and we also managed to do a top speed of 135 kilometers which is not a point where the vehicle was really comfortable but yes 100 110 the espresso is calm composed you do not feel any signs of nervousness with it so that is a good thing considering the segment and the price that it comes for and uh, well the engine is again refined that is one thing that really stands out the moment you start driving the espresso this is one thing that will stand out especially if you are someone who's driven other cars in these in this particular segment you will drive this and i can bet on it that probably in just about a couple of kilometers you'll realize how smooth the espresso's powertrain is compared to its competition in terms of nvh that is noise vibration and harshness again it just performs very very impressively so uh, yes good performance the gearbox if you talk about it the manual gearbox it's got good ratios you don't have to downshift frequently so you can potter around at 47 48 kilometers comfortably in fifth gear can't accelerate cleanly from there but yes you can maintain that speed in fifth gear without compromising fuel efficiency and talking of fuel efficiency well it is quite a fuel efficient engine too on the highway yesterday we had a clean run not much traffic we were able to get a best fuel efficiency of around 22.4 kilometers indicated by the system so you can take it in average probably around 21 kilometers so in day-to-day -day conditions you can easily expect something above 18 in city driving conditions which is good for its segment and of course uh, the ags that we're driving right now again i have said this earlier in some other reviews as well and i will repeat it that when it comes to the integration and the calibration of amt's maruti suzuki has completely nailed it it's got the calibration better than any other manufacturer in the country and again you can see that result in the espresso so compared to any other car compared to its key rival in this segment you've got less head nods you've got less of that shock that goes like this in an amt whoa, whoa. that does not happen much here it's a very smooth transition from one gear to the other so that's a good thing and in fact in the manual also the throws are quite short so overall in terms of driving Bharti Suzuki has been able to give a good package and uh, safety well it meets all the safety regulations that are applicable for India so you do get dual layer bags you get ABS and uh, you get the speed warning that is at a single beep at 80 continuous beep past 120 and rear parking sensors so all of this is there Maruti Suzuki also claims that because this is uh, based on a derivative of the Hartek platform they have used about 40% high tensile strength steel and as a result of that crash worthiness of this structure is quite nice now that is something that the company claims and that's what we are telling you and uh, so if you add up all of these things what you get is a vehicle that gives you great practicality good value for money talking of which money well the espresso is priced between 3.69 lakh to about 4.9 lakhs and that's for the top variant and if you look at it from a variant perspective on for every variant you get good set of features as i told you there are some segment first features in this so in fact you get very good value for money so it's a good car to drive it's got good space it's got good features it gives you good uh, fuel efficiency it's convenient to drive it's got a very good nice high seating position so if you're someone who's new to driving uh, well you will find that extra confidence because all-around visibility is great so for, on all those parameters the car performs well but and I say, but the only thing is that to go ahead like this and buy this, you need to be someone who falls in love with this design or at the first sight. It's not a design I can say that will grow. So, well, if you don't like it, you will not like it. 
If you like it, well, just go ahead and buy it. It gives you one of the best value for money equations right now in this price bracket and of course a different experience. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. For any other information that you need, please feel free to shoot us a comment and we will be happy to answer that. And if you like this video, also please do share it, like it and yes of course, do subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.